Hello, we're back at the Aegeus Bowl once again recording our weekly vodcast and today we are here for finals day in the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Um, so we'll talk about um, the matches that are coming up um, in a little bit um, but first of all Sid this has been the first ever year of the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Um, how do you think it's kind of gone as a competition? What have you made of it? Oh, well, it's obviously an important part, it's going to be an important part of the calendar going forwards. Um, it's kind of interesting to think about um, the, the fact that we've got the 100, which is kind of almost a T20 competition, and then we've got this competition, um, which is a proper T20 competition. We talked quite a lot um, as the 100 was being kind of invented and first proposed about how you know, we still needed to have a proper T20 competition. Um, and actually, I think the 100 was that closer to T20 than we thought it would be. But nevertheless, I th still think it's important that the regional cricketers have lots of cricket to play. There are obviously a few people that aren't playing in the 100 that get to play in this. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it's been a good competition and still a strong competition. Um, there have been some issues, I think, with the format, though. So um, we've had this kind of slightly weird format where we have, like, two groups, but then part of it is done as a combined table. So the, the top team is, like, from a combined table that goes directly into the final, and the third-place team also um, is d decided, uh, you know, across the two groups, and then we've got the two group winners, and my goodness, that's complicated. Um, one of the things 100 got right was actually to keep things really simple. So, for instance, 100 had no bonus points. Why did they do that? Because they just wanted to keep the, the format of the table really simple. Um, now I'm not suggesting that we don't have bonus points in this but we do need to think about simplicity. Um, it's ir deeply ironic that the reason that this format was devised, we've got two groups, they're seeded groups, they're not north and south groups, they're seeded, um, was essentially because everybody complained last year that the Western Storm um, had been kind of denied a rightful place uh, in the RHF final because they happened to be in a group with the Southern Vipers who were by far the strongest team and I think that most people, you know, um, apart from if you're from Yorkshire probably, agreed that the Western Storm were the second strongest team last year in the RHF. So it's deeply ironic that the Western Storm lost out again from the format this, this year um, and they also missed the cut and haven't made it to finals day and so we're going to see the, the Diamonds and the Vipers and the Stars today. I got all them right. I am getting slightly confused with all these teams and I did spend several minutes in a converse conversation with Valkyrie from Crick Info yesterday talking about the Stars when I meant the Invincibles so <laughs> it's, it's, it's been tough for me Raf. <laughs> yeah you, you're getting on a bit you can't be expected to remember everything don't worry <laughs> um, have there been any standout moments for you overall in the Charlotte Edwards Cup I mean it's kind of been sandwiched either side of the hundred and obviously we missed some of the opening rounds because we were at England fixtures but any standout moments for you I, I think the standout moment has to be Marie Kelly's century for me. I, I wrote a, quite a long piece about it because I did an interview with Marie about the, the sort of build up, the, the several year build up to her her innings there so you can go on the, the site and read that um, she says some really interesting stuff about the way that the KSL was done and the way that you know her experience in the hundred kind of all drove into you know this this moment for her of like catharsis of her f finally scoring a, a big in a really big innings on the big stage um, I didn't watch that match in person so I was actually sitting at the stars match in Guildford and I was sitting there pressing refresh on my phone as <laughs> as Marie got close to her hundred so I enjoyed it through the through the medium of a, of a moving scorecard but that's still a standout moment for me what about you Raf? Um, well I haven't seen a huge number of matches but I think probably from what I have seen it will be Alice Capsey here um, a week ago um, and she hit that half century. Um, she, I think what she did well in that innings was that she, st she started a bit slowly um, which isn't isn't like her isn't her natural game and she was kind of scratching around a bit um, but she hung around and then she finally kind of brought it um, you know after have it going off to a difficult start um, and to kind of fight through that difficult start is obviously something that you need to be able to do as a player because you aren't always going to be able to turn it on from ball one every time so I thought she did that well and then she obviously came out um, having fallen over um, and obviously she then sat out that match on Monday um, against uh, against the um, I was about to say the Birmingham Phoenix so I'm doing it too now against the Central Spark. She sat out that that as a um, that match as a precaution. Um, so she fell over at the end of her right at the end of her innings here last last week. Um, but then she came out and opened the bowling in the power play, took a couple of wickets for Vipers, and basically made it impossible for them to chase down the target. So she was the real star of that match, and that was that was really nice to see. I know you've got strong thoughts on on Alice Capsey, Sid. <laughs> 
I do have some strong thoughts on Alice Capsi. Um, but um, so this week we've seen uh, two England debutants. Um, we've seen Maya Boucher make her debut yesterday, uh, and earlier in the week we saw Emma Lamb make hers. But the debut we didn't see was that of Alice Capsi. And I think that it's becoming harder and harder to to kind of. To, to suggest that Alice Capsi is not among the 11 best players in the country. Um, I think that if, if you start making direct con comparisons with people, you'll see that she really should be playing for England already. It's, it's no longer a question, I think, of, you know, will she play for England? When might she make her debut? She really, sh actually, she should have been playing, frankly, in this series. Um, and I think that England really missed, missed a trick there um, because I think that she could potentially give a much better balance to the England side. You could bat her at three. That would actually... Uh, kind of help with some of the issues with the the batting that we saw yesterday at Hove because there'd be a bit of a longer batting lineup. She would absolutely be able to bowl four overs, um, and she, so she'd be able to deliver on both counts. And I do not understand why England are stubbornly at this, this point overlooking her. To be frank, she should be playing for England. Yeah, I mean, I don't really disagree. Um, I think that you there's maybe an argument that she's got a year left at school, so let her do that and get her A-levels under her belt and, um, you know, kind of... Um, obviously that was what they originally did with, with Sophie Eccleston, um, who didn't play in the 2017 World Cup because she was doing her exams. Um, but I think that... Um, and I think that, that could maybe be trotted out as an explanation, but really what it comes down to is Heather Knight being a bit stubborn, doesn't it? Um, she uh, made a judgment early on that she didn't think that Alice Capsi was ready. Then Alice Capsi has come out and basically done brilliantly in all um, domestic cricket this season, but Heather Knight doesn't want to kind of row back on what she originally said. Um, and admit that she was wrong <laughs> maybe uh, isn't great at doing that because we do see quite often um, selections that are made on having made a previous investment in people and there's a kind of sunk cost fallacy going on isn't there well this person's got an England contract this person's got an England contract we've, we've already given this person a debut so let's um, you know persist with them at the expense of a, a really exciting youngster like Capsi who's coming through um, so yeah, a bit disappointing. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that I, I sort of feel I need to slightly defend myself here to a to a certain extent, you know, because I've talked about plenty of other players in the past, and I've you know I said you know, two or three years ago that Maya Boucher one day will play for England, but I've I've not quite been at the point where even even with Lauren Bell, I've been watching Lauren Bell. I, I, I was saying you know six or seven years ago that Lauren Bell will one day play for England, but I have never stood here and said Lauren Bell should be playing for England now, and I think that this why this is such a different case. There is there is no no doubt in my mind that Alice Capsi is one of the 11 best cricketers in this country um, and the 11 best cricketers in this country should be playing for England. Now that's no shade at all on the two players that did make their, their debuts this week. Um, Emma Lamb, who you know we've been saying for a long time has a future with England um, and uh, so she was uh, a part of England's win in Chelmsford. Uh, she didn't actually get to do very much uh, as you talked about on, on our preview vodcast, Raf. Um, you know, she didn't actually bowl a ball or face a delivery. She technically batch came in and saw one ball from the non-strikers end. Um, and then Maya Boucher uh, played in New Zealand's win so like sl slightly overshadowed her debut uh, but still made a good contribution so the series is one all do you think that's a fair reflection of where the England and New Zealand are Raf? I do actually um, I thought that New Zealand were um, you know played pro played pretty well yesterday at Hove um, and I think that it's good for England to be tested like that um, I think that um, you know there were a lot there was lots of talk after that win at Chelmsford oh England the brilliant um, and we do have a tendency to get carried away um, actually I think that um, that would have been if we'd gone on and then won the series yesterday it would have been papering over a few cracks I don't think that England's bowling has been brilliant um, and obviously Tammy Beaumont really carried the batting um, in that first win at Chelmsford um, but yesterday England did what they have got a bit of a tendency to do in T20 cricket I'm afraid which is um, to kind of embrace the batting collapse um, really I, and, and absolutely no shade on Maya Boucher because I thought she had a brilliant debut um, and did absolutely what we would have expected of her but ultimately um, it was disappointing that neither Danny Wyatt nor Sophia Dunkley who both kind of got in then got themselves out and weren't there at the end and it was that those last four overs um, where England only 
only scored 20 runs and only hit one boundary that really cost them because if they'd had you know 20 or 30 more runs on the board that would have put really, really put New Zealand under pressure when Sophie Devine got out and they might well not have managed to chase it down um, and I do think that um, this is a weakness that England have is that when um, you know a couple of wickets fall in the power play and then they they you know have this kind of tendency to then get themselves out after that and we saw it against South Africa in the T20 World Cup in Australia in 2020 um, in the gr that group stage match that they lost to South Africa that ultimately cost them their place in the final at the MCG that was the thing that cost them really not the rain um, so yeah I think that um, you know is it a fair reflection well Sophie Devine was brilliant yesterday I'm really really pleased for her to see her back batting at her best um, and New Zealand have got players like that who can take a match away from England and ultimately they need to bowl better at her if they're going to win those matches um, so I think it's a fair reflection you may disagree <laughs> Yeah, I think that England is still a better side than New Zealand overall. Um, you know, but as we know, if if, if New Zealand, if, if one of their big players comes to the party as Sophie Devine did, and and those those big sixes were absolutely vintage Sophie Devine shots, just you know, just whipped away with you know with barely a, a thought put into them. She was just like in the zone, as she she herself said afterwards in the press conference. You know, it's she she doesn't even kind of have to think about that when she plays those kind of strokes, and that was lovely to see. So um, yeah, but. I still think that overall England really should be, you know, winning that that third game, and they'll be disappointed if they don't take this series because they really are a better side than New Zealand at this stage. I think. Well, we'll have to see what happens at Taunton on Thursday, um, and I guess we'll be doing a little video at the start of that match. Um, but for now, back to the Charlotte Edwards Cup um, finals day. And we've got the semi-final coming up first, as we said, between Diamonds and the Vipers. Um, who's your metaphorical money on, Sid? Well, it's been a tough, tough old couple of weeks for the Vipers, hasn't it? That, um, you know, they've come back after the 100. Um, obviously, a lot of those, the, the Vipers some of the players and a lot of the staff were involved in the 100 and uh, for the Southern Brave and they lost that final and they've come back here. Um, they've lost a couple of matches in the T20 Cup. Um, now they're going to be without Maya Boucher, they're without Charlie Dean, they're without Danny Wyatt. So, you know, those things do have an impact. Um, and, you know, I'm a Vipers, Vipers fan and a Vipers supporter and I'd love to see them you know, do well. Um, but I suspect that the Yorkshire Super Diamonds will have a bit too much for them in the semi-final. So, that's my perspective on the semi-final. What do you think about the semi-final, Raf? Oh, this is this is funny because it always ends up in me saying that Vipers are going to win and you saying that they aren't. This is exactly what happened because these were the two finalists in the um, the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy at Edgbaston last year, and I said that Vipers were going to win and you said that they weren't, and they did. Um, I think that Vipers will win. I think that they're a better side than the Northern Diamonds, um, and I think that uh, Charlotte Edwards will have had a very stern talking to them. Um, yes, it has been a difficult couple of weeks, but um, she's got the kind of now as coach um, to be able to talk them out of that slump um, and they have got some excellent players you know Georgia Elwis is is with them she's not um, with the England squad and I think she'll be really important and uh, they have obviously got we think that that Lauren Bell's going to be um, back because obviously she was missing last weekend um, when they lost to Stars because she was pinged but believe that she played on Monday um, so, and yeah. so so yeah I think okay. that I think that Vipers could uh, win the semi-final um, and what then the what, but what about the final raft then on this. So you think it's going to be Vipers against the, um, now let's get this right, it's not the Invincibles, it's the Stars. That's the the one. South East Stars, not the Surrey Stars as well. Um, yeah, I think the Stars will win the final, having just banged on about how brilliant Vipers are. Um, because, you know, they've got Alice Capsey. Um, and they definitely have got her, by the way, because um, the, they confirmed it earlier this week that she was just sitting out on Monday as a precaution. Um, so, yeah, who, you know, who else do you need, really? Yeah, I think that I, I agree with you there that the Stars are a very strong side. They've got Bryony Smith as well and uh, Alice Davidson Richards, um, all players that can, you know, hit big and um, are going to also contribute with the ball. And I think that. I predicted right at the beginning of the season, I believe, that the Stars could win this T20 Cup. And I think that they will do it. They have the momentum, they have the players. That's what I'm expecting. OK, so a little bit of smugness there from Sid with his crystal ball. <laughs> um, let's look forward to a really great finals day and we'll see you in a week's time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.